One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, for that. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today we're talking a little bit about the NFL draft, and not necessarily a mock draft, not necessarily talking about who the Jaguars should snatch up in this year's draft. No, no, no. We've done enough of that, and trust me, there is more and more to come as far as that goes. There will be another live interactive mock draft tomorrow, so make sure you all swing by for that. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we're making one of those long lists. I know you guys love lists, and today we are going to be ranking every single Jaguars first round pick from worst to best. And it took me a while to formulate this list because the Jags have never really hit on a lot of their first round draft picks, so their top 10 is not necessarily the greatest of top 10s, but you get down to about the top 5, and then you see some all-time greats, ladies and gentlemen. So today, what we are doing is we are ranking all 25 of the Jaguars' first-round picks from worst to best. Number 25, RJ Seward, 2000, wide receiver. This guy is the worst Jaguars' first-round pick, not because he was necessarily a bust, but because he only played one full season with our Jacksonville Jaguars. Suspension held him out from playing. That sounds like a lot of other wide receivers we have had in the past that we will touch on here a little bit later. But due to him always violating the NFL rules and getting suspended, it prevented him from playing more than one season. In that one season, Mr. Suwar didn't necessarily impress and was probably the biggest draft bust in Jaguar history. It did not work out for hit for the Jaguars, and it did not work for them as a first-round pick, and that is why he comes in at number 25 on the list. Number 24, Justin Blackman, wide receiver, 2012. Much like Sue Ward, uh, Justin Blackman was held back due to personal issues with suspensions and all of that, but when he was in there, man, did he show a lot of promise. A lot of Jags fans like myself around this time were talk was talking myself into the fact that oh Justin Blackman's okay. He's gonna get better. He's gonna be able to get back here on the field and truly be the most dominant wide receiver that we have on this team and the most dominant receiver that we've had since uh, Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardell and he definitely showed flashes of that. He had one game where he went over two hundred yards, but the fact that he could not keep himself out of trouble ruin his entire NFL career and ruin any chance he had at being one of the greats to ever step foot in Jacksonville. Number 24, Derek Harvey, 2008. Derek Harvey had the longest holdout for a rookie in Jaguar history, uh, first round rookie I should say in Jaguar history, the one prior to him was Byron Leftwich. He held out for 24 days and ended up getting a five year deal worth 21.4 million dollars he came from the University of Florida and you know that back in the day Wayne Weaver loved his Florida boys and he loved his small school boys and Derek Harvey was a Florida guy that was a first round selection for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2008 and this is a guy that underperformed and did not perform up to par with the Jaguars and was let go after his rookie contract was over. This is a guy that was not successful with the Jacksonville Jaguars, wasn't successful elsewhere either, and he is one of the worst first-round selections the Jags have ever made. Number 23, Blaine Gabbert, quarterback, 2011. Blaine Gabbert's on top of every Jaguar bust video. If you think of a Jaguar bust, you think of Blaine Gabbert. Now, how much of that was actually Blaine Gabbert's fault? Was it the weapons around him that he had absolutely none of? Was it the offensive line that just could not hold up for Mr. Blaine Gabbert? What did he have the potential to be a really good... No, 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 no. Blaine Gabbert was bad. His offensive line was bad. And the wide receivers were also tremendously, tremendously bad, ladies and gentlemen. And the Jaguars were in a bad situation in 2011. And if you want a poster boy for the dark years of Jacksonville Jaguar football, you ain't got to look any further than the number 23 best first-round draft pick. 23 best, you know, one of the worst first-round draft picks the Jaguars have ever made. And Blaine Gabbert is the face of the dark days of Jacksonville Jaguar football. Number 22, Luke Jokel, 
Offensive lineman, 2013. Now, this is a pig you can't blame the Jacksonville Jaguars on. Luke Jokel was probably the highest scouted offensive lineman coming out of the 2013 NFL Draft. The 2013 Draft was not loaded with talent by any means. It was one of the worst draft classes in recent memory. So you can't really blame the Jags on this pick. Luke Jokel looked like the guy that had the most upside to bring out of any of these rookies coming in. And they really thought that he could anchor this offensive line for years and years to come, but he became a revolving door. People were getting right by him. You know, he was allowing sacks left and right. He was getting injured as well. He was never, you know, reliable to stay on the field, and when he did, he did not perform well. Somehow, this guy keeps on getting jobs, though. It has to be the fact that he was a former number two overall selection and, you know, the Jags are basically the reason that this guy keeps getting jobs. But, you know, he goes anywhere. Seattle, I mean, everybody in Seattle knows he's trash. If you're watching this video and you're a Seattle fan, you know damn well Luke Jogel is not a good left tackle. He's not a good guard either. He might even be worse at the guard position. I've seen people, you know, defensive tackles go right up the middle sack. You know, and just like, it's almost like he didn't even touch him. Luke Jokel was one of the biggest busts in Jaguar history. And unfortunately, it wasn't really on the Jaguar. It was on this terrible draft class and the upside that Luke Jokel showed the year the Jaguars drafted him. Number 21, Byron Leftwich, quarterback, 2003. Byron Leftwich is the latest quarterback added to this first round uh, draft pick video. And he is also very low on the list. Byron Leftwich couldn't get the job done as far as winning games. He didn't take the Jags to the playoffs once. And he had a losing record as a part of the Jacksonville Jaguars starting quarterback. However, this guy has completely turned his career around, not as a, a player, but as a coach. He's the current offensive coordinator for, I believe, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I believe that's where he ended up getting his job. Uh, and that's tremendous on him. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Uh, when he was in Arizona, he wasn't necessarily handed the you know, best weapons to handle as far as being an offensive coordinator, but maybe now he's in Tampa Bay with Bruce Arians, a veteran head coach, uh, they will be able to get things done, and I couldn't be more happier with the turnaround for Byron Leftwich. Byron Leftwich was the man that got me into Jacksonville Jaguar football, if you could believe that, back in 2006, 2007, and this guy also went on to be a pretty successful backup quarterback, so let's hope for the best for Blake Bortles in that sense, because Bortles could be the next Byron Leftwich, where he's just a tremendously, tremendously reliable backup, and maybe he'll go into coaching, I don't know, Bortles doesn't seem like he's really in to the whole coaching thing, but in no fault of his own, Byron Leftwich is number 21 on the best, best Jaguars first round draft picks. Coming in at number 20, we have wide receiver Matt Jones, 2005. This is another wide receiver that could not stay out of trouble. Constant suspensions, constant drug arrests, constant, you know, everything in between for Matt Jones. And he never had an opportunity to really go off. I think he's a lot like Justin Blackman. I think he had some potential there, but he was either hurt or getting in a lot of trouble. So Matt Jones is a guy that the Jaguars drafted on pure upside. This guy at the University of Washington tore up, looked like a true really good wide receiver and was going to help the Jags improve to get to that next level. But every time the Jaguars seem to do that, when they draft a first round wide receiver, it almost instantly, instantly backfires on them. So keep that in mind this year when you think that the Jaguars should draft DK Metcalf, especially because his feet are a little sketchy. Imagine that. Just imagine, you know, all the wide, we have only drafted, I believe now one more wide receiver uh, all time in the first round. And the two of the three are way near the top as far as one of the worst first-round picks the Jags have ever made. And Matt Jones, unfortunately, comes in at number 20 on the list. Number 19, Kevin Hardy, 1996. Kevin Hardy was a linebacker that truly, truly showed his on and off potential. He was a guy that was hot one week and really, really cold the next week. And just as an overall player, he was really, really inconsistent. And it's a real shame because he definitely showed a lot of potential to be a solid player and a solid piece, especially for this organization. But unfortunately, the Jags had to let him go after his rookie contract was up. And he did end up going to play some places else, but not for a long time. You know, uh, the Jags... Their busts never really go on to do a lot of things. You know, that's saying 
a lot. Blaine Gabbard, I guess. Luke Jokel, he's still around. By you know, and that's that's such a lie. I guess Jaguar Bus do hang around. They just hang around usually on the bench. But Kevin Hardy was a guy that unfortunately did not stick around very long, and that is why he comes in at number 19 on the top Jaguars first round picks. Number 18, James Stewart, 1995. This guy was supposed to be the original Jacksonville Jaguar running back before the Jaguars decided to select Fred Taylor in 1998. This guy was the original Jacksonville Jaguar running back, and he didn't do too bad. You know, there was a, there was a year, I believe his career high was 723 yards uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So in no way, shape, or form was this guy a bad player. He just did not play for the Jaguars for very long for me to rank him uh, above a lot of people. So unfortunately, that is why he comes in where he comes in at. But this was a guy that looked like he could have been the franchise running back for the Jags, but, you know, injuries and things like that kept him from really reaching his full potential. Uh, I would have really wanted to, that would have been nuts if James Stewart ended up being, you know, the man, the guy, and we would have never got, you know, Fred Taylor. Maybe we would have got Maurice Jones-Drew, but Fred Taylor probably would have been out of the situation in 1998 if Mr. Stewart didn't leave the team. And he was also the second first-round pick the Jags ever made uh, with Tony Baselli in the 1995 draft. And he comes in at number 18 on this list. Number 17, Fernando Bryant, cornerback, 1999. This guy with five years with the Jacksonville Jaguars ranked up five interceptions, had a couple of years of 70-plus tackles and one year of over 100 tackles. This guy was stout during his time with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Unfortunately, he just was not a part of the team long enough to rank him high on this list. So, you know, Fernando Bryant, he was a guy, like I said, you know, he had over 100 tackles one year, 70 uh, consistently with five interceptions. Uh, he was a corner the Jags really relied on early in its season to be hit the number one guy. You know, he got he got burned a couple of times, but he was in no way, shape, or form the worst corner we've ever had, especially definitely not in the dark ages of Jacksonville Jaguar football. He was actually pretty consistent and pretty solid uh, during the times that he has started for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you also got to keep in mind, too, Fernando Bryant, who was drafted in 1999. I was one years old when I uh, in 1999, your boy was one years old. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of research that had to be done uh, with this list. So if he did do something terrific or amazing, you know, any of these older guys that we've drafted uh, that have done terrific and amazing and different things and that I haven't listed them, we'll leave that in the comment section down below so, you know, I could be more informed on what they did in their earlier years. But like I said, mostly film and mostly stats. So that's why Fernando Bryant comes in at number 17 on this list. Number 16, Reggie Williams, wide receiver, 2004. This is the best Jaguars receiver that they have ever drafted in the first round based off of consistency. And Reggie Williams was a wide receiver during some dark days of the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, and he was not necessarily the best wide receiver ever. And, you know, as pure talent-wise, I'd say he's probably – worse than Justin Blackman, you know, because Blackman had all that upside, unfortunately, just with the off-the-field issues, he wasn't able to reach that full potential, but Reggie Williams was a guy, he never got more than 750, I believe, 800 yards receiving for the Jags, but was constantly on the field, was constantly playing, you know, maybe there's a couple of injury hiccups here and there, but he wasn't getting suspended, you know, he wasn't getting kicked off the team or anything like that, at least not to my knowledge if he was. I may look like an idiot, but leave it in the comments section down below if you did get into some trouble. But uh, that's the best wide receiver the Jags have ever drafted in the first round. So, I mean, there's not necessarily a high ceiling if we do draft a guy like DK Metcalf or maybe trade back and get a guy like A.J. Brown uh, later on in the draft. There's, you know, they could easily be the best wide receiver the Jags have ever drafted. And that could be easy, 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 at least in the first round. At least in the first round. Because, I mean, you got Allen Robinson in the second round. He's still tearing it up in Chicago. Uh, Marquise Lee, who's been solid. He's been around. But, you know, the career-ending, I mean, season-ending injury, that might have, you know, held him back. But, again, Reggie Williams uh, was consistent from the time he was in. You know, a couple of injuries sidelined him a little bit. But, you know, a constant 500, 700-yard guy. And that's why he comes in right around the middle of this list at number 16. Number 15, Ronaldo Wynn, 1997. 
Ronaldo Wynn didn't start 16 games for the Jaguars until his last year with the team in 2001, but in those games, he did make a pretty good impact. He started in 15 games in 98 and 14 in 2000, um, and he made fi- he got 15 and a half sacks and 23 tackles for a loss, so that's pretty solid uh, for a defensive end. Um, for the Jaguars and again this is a guy I really did not see play I didn't even know the Jags drafted him in the first round I personally never ever heard of him but you know he did average for the time that he was here in Jacksonville he was a starter but again you know some of those little nagging injuries probably kept him uh, from playing a full 16 game season you know in 98 as well as 2000 where he played 14 15 and then maybe even in 99 where he played 10 you know, injuries may have cost this guy a little bit more on a stat sheet, but there's just so many Jaguar players that were below average that these average guys find themselves, you know, a little bit more near the top of the list. So I hope you guys understand. I'm not necessarily saying that he was a above all and everything, you know, a great, tremendous player, but with some of the players the Jags have drafted in the first round, doing average might be better than anything else. Number 14, Taven Bryan, 2018. Now you you guys are probably wondering, Treb, you only play, you only did this, you only did that. You haven't ranked about this guy, you haven't ranked about that. Chill out. I think he has some upside. Now that Malik Jackson has been released, I think that he's going to be able to fill that defensive tackle role where he should be. I don't think he should be a rush end or a defensive end. I don't think that plays to his strengths. But I think the potential is there for him to improve and for him to show why he was a first round pick and to show the ceiling that he does have. Uh, And, you know, that's why I have him ranked so, you know, highly on this list is because I think he can do it. I think he has the potential to show up and be a guy that the Jaguars rely on. Now, you know, I couldn't rank him any higher than 14 because that would just be silly. I can't place him in the top 10 after a one sack season. You know, that's one a one trick pony. You know, I couldn't do that. But with the upside and the potential that I think Taven Bryant has, I think he has the opportunity to get higher and higher on this list if he wants to get better and if he does get better uh, in 2019 to be a solid defensive tackle alongside Avery Jones. I wouldn't be surprised if the, you know, it's Avery Jones uh, and Taven Bryan in the inside. And then, you know, you got Yan and Calais on the outside, which is a pretty stout uh, defensive line overall, I must say. So with him getting more sacks, I mean, more stat, more starts, damn, more starts, I think that he is going to be able to be uh, a good part of this Jacksonville Jaguar defense uh, for years to come. Number 13, Tyson Aluwalu in 2010. If you guys want a little uh, perspective, the first ever draft pick, first round draft pick I've ever seen the Jaguars make was Tyson Aluwalu in 2010. So now that was nine years ago. Nine years ago, I watched my first draft and I was watching it. I was listening to the analysts talk a little bit, like back in the day, you know, I didn't know too much. So I was just listening. I was like, oh, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they said Tyson Aluwalu. And I was like, who the hell is that? And, you know, Tyson Aluwalu was at the very definition of average. He was just, he was solid. You know, he was a part of this, he was probably the best defensive lineman we had from when he was on the team to when he left. Uh, and he was consistently, consistently average. There were some injuries, of course, like all these other players that held him out from being, you know, maybe a step up of where he is. But, you know, that happens. It happens every now and again. But like I said, Tyson Aluwalu is basically the face of average, and he's still getting, you know, uh, rotation time with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's still in this league. So entering year number 10 for Mr. Tyson Aluwalu, and I'm excited for him. I was really excited when Pittsburgh picked him up because, you know, I have a little bit of an emotional connection to him because he was the first player that I've ever seen the Jaguars draft in the first round. I think during his time with Jacksonville, he did a little bit okay. He did average, and I think that's why he should be at at least 13 on the list of the best first round picks in Jaguar history. Number 12, Eugene Monroe, left tackle, 2009. You look at this guy and you look at what could have been. The Jaguars could have signed him to an extension, but they would have had to fork up a lot of money to do so. Because when he was playing, he was one of the best left tackles uh, in his game and his you know, years he's played. But, you know, since then, he went to Baltimore, performed well, and then left to be, you know, a big old weed advocate, which props to you, man. You know, smoke weed every day, I guess. 
yeehaw, your boy doesn't smoke weed, so I don't really know uh, what that's all about. So, <laughs> I'm awkward as shit. Eugene Monroe, drafted in 2009. He was a solid left tackle to an offensive line that all around wasn't that great. And I think that uh, during the dark years of Jacksonville, he definitely probably wanted to get out of it. But, you know, for a guy for a while that was probably the best player we had on the field was our left tackle. Eugene Monroe did stellar his rookie season. He did stellar every year he was with Jacksonville. And, you know, I just wish we could have locked him down for longer and really seen where his career could have took him. Coming in at number 11, we have safety, Reggie Nelson. Reggie Nelson was a fan favorite in Jacksonville, and why wasn't he? He was one of the better safeties the Jaguars ever drafted. They only drafted two, and they are both really high on this list. And he also found a job elsewhere, whether that be in Cincinnati, Oakland, anywhere. I believe he did recently retire. I could be wrong, but I think he did. The Jaguars drafted him in 2007. He was part of the, uh, I think his rookie year was the year that they beat Pittsburgh in the, uh, in the divisional round, I think, or the wild card round. I think that was, you know, his rookie year, and he performed. He was one of the better safeties of his time. Again, Jacksonville just isn't an attractive place to stay at, especially during the time that Reggie Nelson was around, and, you know, he was going to get big bucks somewhere else, so, you know, he ended up leaving, but he was one of the better players the Jags drafted, and he had a overall good NFL career, and he had a pretty good number of years with Jacksonville as well before he ended up leaving and, uh, like I said, one of the better overall players the Jaguars ever drafted as far as having a long-term career in the NFL. So, you know, if he retired recently, that's still 12 seasons in the league. You're set for life at that point. You're basically set for life after four years. But Reggie Nelson, my man, comes in at number 11 on the best first-round draft picks in Jaguar history. Number 10, Blake Bortles, quarterback, 2014. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> I know what all y'all are going to say. It took years every... Uh, fuck y'all. You know what? No. I'm putting Blake Bortles in the top 10 for a simple reason. King of garbage time. He threw 35 touchdowns in a season. Over 4,000 yards. You can't tell me shit. King of garbage time. He put up those stats. 2017. You know, I wasn't around. I was alive, but I wasn't around for like the 99 season. You know, when the Jags were in the AFC Championship game, went 14-2, and only lost to the Titans twice, and I ended up losing to them again the AFC Championship game. Damn it, 2017 was the best Jaguar season as a fan that I have ever witnessed, and I will never forget it because Blake Bortles was the quarterback. And, you know, he showed flashes of where he was bad. Yes, he did. But, you know, towards the end, and especially in the playoffs, that boy was on a new level. That boy stepped things up, didn't turn the ball over once. Uh in the playoffs, and whether you like it or not, Blake Bortles is statistically probably the second best quarterback the Jaguars have ever had, and he was only on the team from 2014 to the 2018 season, the 2018 season was so hard to watch, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like he was getting old, you know, he was just going, and he's not, he's not old, he's young, you know, he went out there, and he was throwing ducks, balls that just were like, what, are you in the NFL, bro, like, how are you throwing this, you should probably go back to high school, you know what I mean, but, uh, nothing but the best wishes for Blake Bortles, I think he's probably in the top 10, he is in my top 10 for the best first round draft picks that Jaguars have ever made, and uh, that might cause some controversy, but uh, let's debate it in the comment section down below if you wish to do so. But now he's the backup quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams. And I don't know if you guys see in the video, but he goes, hey, this is Blake Bortles. Go Rams. Excited to play in Los Angeles. Go Rams. And you can tell, dude, he wants to be back here, guys. We need to just, we need, we need to buy out his contract. We need to bring him back home. He's scared. <laughs> you know, I feel like a parent, man. He's scared. He doesn't want to be there. Uh, but no, I think it's fair putting Blake Bortles at number 10 of the best first round picks in Jaguar history. Number 9, Leonard Fournette, running back. The jersey I'm repping right now comes from the ninth best first round pick the Jaguars ever made. Um, and he had a good rookie season. However, injuries plagued last season. And I think this year is the year he reaches his full form. I think this is a guy the Jags won on their team for a long time. This is a guy that they have admitted to and have tried to build the offense around. And there's no way in heck that he won't be successful if that is the mantra of the offense. Trying to build it to be successful towards Leonard Fournette. Now with the new offensive coordinator and the fact that the play calls are going to be switched up a little bit more so it's not as predictable, I think Leonard Fournette goes off this year. I think he reaches his rookie form. I think he's going to be able to go over 1,000 yards. And again, this is kind of like the Taven Bryan situation where 
I have him here because I think he's going to step up these next two years, uh, be able to get a contract extension here, hopefully, and really be the running back of the future. The Jaguars always have solid running backs, and Leonard Fournette should be the next name to add to that legion of running backs from Fred Taylor, Maurice Jones-Drew, and now Leonard Fournette. And I think that, and I truly, truly do, and I truly think that Leonard Fournette will reach his full potential this year and be an over 1,000-yard rusher and go back to his rookie form. Number eight, Dante Fowler Jr. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of flock for this, but I think this guy's going to have a tremendous NFL career overall, especially if he sticks with the Rams. I think the Rams is a good system for him. I think it fits him as well as he fit in Jacksonville as well. Unfortunately, though, a injury that prevented him from playing his uh, torn ACL uh, prevented him from playing at all his rookie season. We saw the rise of Yannick Ngakwe, and unfortunately, he was had to play behind Ngakwe, but still playing behind him for the limited amount of reps he got, he still came out and dominated and still was one of the most reliable pass rushers the Jags had uh, at the time. And he has been reliable, and he has been that dude. And I don't care what you guys say, I think Dante Fowler Jr. is worthy of a top 10. Number seven, Marcus Strahd, defensive tackle, 2001. Marcus Strahd was the definition of consistency for the Jacksonville Jaguars from the years 2001 through 2007. He started in 16 games in 2002, 2003, 2004, and 2005. Started in 11 in 2006 and 9 in 2007. In those years, that boy racked up 6.5, 4.5, 4.5, 1, and 2.5, and, and 3 sacks uh, on his resume, his total tackles. Um, 47, 38, 31, you know, all uh, combined. Oh, sorry, I was looking at combined. Here we go. Sorry about that. 45, 65, 54, 42, 21, and 22. So this guy was consistent on the defensive line. He was selected to a Pro Bowl in 2003 and 2005 and was a true part of what made this Jaguar defense uh, during his time from 01 to 07 was a solid piece of this team, and he also had a teammate that was right next to him that was also really, really solid. Number six, John Henderson, defensive tackle. John Henderson played with the Jags from 2002 all the way through 2009. He started in 13 games, 16, 16, 15, 16, 15, 14, 15. So injuries were never really a problem in Henderson's game. If they were, he was only out for one to two weeks. He The least amount of games uh, he played in the season was 13, so only missing three games. He's a pro bowler in 2004 and 2006. Um, he had six and a half sacks in 02, three and a half, five and a half, three, three and a half, two, two, two and two. And he had 53, 56, 75, 70, and 51 tackles. One of the most consistent defensive lineman in Jacksonville Jaguar history. Obviously, that's going to be broken by a couple of guys the Jags have now with guys like Calais Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe. Those, both of those guys are incredibly, incredibly consistent. But as far as interior defensive linemen, you don't really need to look for a mold of consistency in Jacksonville better than that of John Henderson. John Henderson was also a meme for a really long time because, you know, he'd get slapped in the face really hard before, <laughs> before he played uh, his football games. But again, that's neither here nor there. One of the most consistent interior defensive linemen for the Jags ever and probably is the most consistent interior defensive lineman for Jacksonville ever. And it's a damn shame he's not in the pride. Hashtag get John Henderson into the pride. Number five, Donovan Darius, safety. Could you imagine having Donovan Darius on the 2017 Jacksonville Jaguars squad? Probably the best safety the Jags have ever had. Probably the hardest hitting safety the Jags have have ever had. Let's look over some of his stats. He played from the Jags from 98 all the way until 2006 where he started 14, 16, 11, 14, 16, 16, 2 in 10 games for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he racked up 4 interceptions, 2 interceptions, 1 interception, 1, 1, 1, and 5. 5 is tied for a uh, franchise high. And I uh, never had a pick six. Wow, that's crazy. Never had a pet, uh, pick six. Pass deflected, 12, 5, 7, 7, 5, 7, 7. Two forced fumble, 1, 2, 2. And he had one fumble recovery touchdown, so that boy did end up finding the end zone at least once. But like I said, probably the best safety in franchise history. The Jaguars were lucky enough to draft him. Unfortunately, he was never named 
uh, to a Pro Bowl in his entire career. But, you know, us Jaguar fans know exactly how special Donovan Darius was and definitely knows that he deserves to be this high on this list. Number four, Mercedes Lewis, tight end, 2005. Mercedes Lewis and Maurice Jones drew two all-time Jaguar legends drafted back-to-back in the first and second round. Mercedes Lewis was on the team from 2005 all the way into 2017 before the Jaguars shockingly, shockingly cut Mr. Mercedes Lewis. But this guy was the face of the organization for a really, really long time during its dark years. He only made the playoffs twice in 2007 and 2017. 2017 making it to the AFC Championship game. And really in 2017 really seemed like he kind of revitalized his career after a while. He was one of the game's best tight ends early on in his career. But you never would have known that because the Jaguars were never really on top of the league. Were never a top tier uh, team that... You know, you'd go and say, oh, Mercedes Lewis is the best. Now, you got guys like Tony Gonzalez, uh, Rob Gronkowski early on in his career. Uh, you know, guys that were just outshining him because they were on bigger market teams. But what Mercedes Lewis has done for this organization cannot be underplayed enough. He was David Garrard's favorite target. Bortles was rely, uh, relied on him a lot in 2017 to be his go-to guy. And, you know, overall, this guy deserves to be in the pride of the Jaguars, especially after all he has done for us uh, as a player. And he definitely needs to retire with the team as well, which I expect that to either be this year or the next, uh, whether Mercedes does find a team to play for. Why not bring him back to Jacksonville? One last ride. Uh, He's obviously probably one of the best as far as, you know, all-time legacies are concerned of all these first-round picks. Uh, especially from the years that he put in with the Jags. He always wanted to be here. Uh, The Jags were the the deciding factor of him leaving. So him coming in at number four is definitely rightfully so because he was an absolute legend in the Jacksonville Jaguar community. Number three, Jalen Ramsey, cornerback, 2016. If you watched my latest podcast with Jason, you heard me say I will never forget the 2016 NFL draft for the simple reason that we stole Jalen Ramsey. That top five that in that year's draft is going to go down as one of the best. You had Wentz, Goff, Ramsey, Bosa, and Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott went to the Cowboys. And then when Bosa was drafted by the Chargers, I was shocked by that. And the Cowboys were on the clock. They drafted Zeke. And I was like, oh my god, we're going to get Jalen Ramsey. And the pick was in just like that. And just like that, the Jaguars drafted the best corner in the NFL right now. He's already been selected to two Pro Bowls and one All-Pro in his three or four years, 2016, 2017, 20, in his third year uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's going to be entering his fourth year this year. And, <clears throat> you know, nothing could be said, nothing, you know, nothing we say about Jalen Ramsey could do it justice. Jalen Ramsey speaks for himself. He knows how good he is, how good he is. He's the only Jaguar player that the Jags have drafted in the first round, uh, at least so far, that I have named. I'm not going to, not going to lead you to anything else. Uh, that has been selected to, to be a, a all-pro, first-team all-pro last year. And, I mean, two years ago now, in 2000. In 17, and is one of the most exciting players the Jags currently have, and is going to go down as one of the best in Jacksonville Jaguar history. Mark it down, he might even go down as the best in Jacksonville Jaguar history. Number two, Tony Baselli, left tackle, 1995. There's no doubt that Tony Baselli is going to be the first Jaguar to ever make it into the NFL. Hall of Fame, no doubt about that. And he was also the first draft pick the Jaguars ever made. Isn't that crazy? And he was the most dominant left tackle of his time. The only thing that, you know, keeps him really out of the discussion every year for the Hall of Fame is the years he played. And that's it, you know. But you got guys like Curtis Martin in the Hall of Fame. There's no reason why Tony Baselli should not already be in the NFL Hall of Fame. He deserves it. He was one of the most, if not the most, dominant left tackles of his whole entire era. He was voted to multiple Pro Bowls. He was also named as an All-Pro. He was also named to the All-Decades team uh, for the 2000s. Like, this guy was no joke. Tony Baselli was one of the most dominant left tackles of his era, but only comes in at number two of the best first-round picks the Jaguars ever made because number one is... Coming in at number one in the best first round selection the Jaguars have ever made, running back Fred Taylor, 1998. 
Fred Taylor's the guy that deserves the Hall of Fame the most. You know, Tony Baselli, yeah, he deserves it. He's been in consideration for it. But, fuck, if you're going to put in guys like Curtis Martin in the Hall of Fame, you might as well put in Fred Taylor as well. If he didn't play for such a small market, this guy would already be in the NFL Hall of Fame. He has the resume. He has the stats. He's been to AFC Championship games. The only reason that's holding him back is because he played for a small market in Jacksonville. But the, it cannot be downplayed enough just how crazy dominant Fred Taylor was in his day with Mark Brunel and how crazy this whole entire offense was with Mark Brunel, Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardell. You, you, know, you don't have to look any further than the game that the Jaguars retired Dan Marino to see how dominant uh, Fred Taylor really was in his heyday. This was one of the best running backs of all time. Top 20, top 15 Top 10 even, maybe, of all time. Fred Taylor is that guy. And Fred Taylor, without hesitation, at least for me, is the best first-round selection the Jacksonville Jaguars have ever made. And that was the top 25 best Jaguar draft picks of all time. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. And again, so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.